everybody, this is Karen Ruiz from Aztec Software. Very good Monday to y'all. We're going to dive right in because we got a lot to cover today, but this is Aztec's features and tools, including the add-on feature lecture to help make your instructional experiences more dynamic. And so again, um, I'm going to cover some of our housekeeping folks. If you see something that you're interested in, please reach out to our sales team at sales at aztecsoftware.com. If you know your field service representatives email address, you could certainly reach out to them. Um, again, if you have uh, questions and you're not sure who to reach out to, you could always go to support at aztecsoftware.com. We're going to pause along the way for questions. Chris Miller from Aztec Software is here with me also. So when we pause, she will feed me some questions if they pertain to the whole group. But uh, those questions you need to put into the question pod and she will feed those to me. I can answer one of those questions that we see every time. Um, I can answer one of those right out of the gate. Uh, unfortunately, at this moment, we are unable to share our PowerPoint slides with everyone, but we are here to help you. So please reach out field service rep or support at AztecSoftware.com. We'd be happy to answer your questions individually if there are any things that you need. This again, of course, is about our company being around for over 40 years for adult education and adult educators and adult students. Family of companies, it continues to grow. What we're really going to focus on today is, of course, our Aztec software programs. Uh, also, our Stecbon print materials. For the most part, we'll be focusing on academic, but a lot of these features are available on the other digital project products and also our print products as well from our CTE healthcare and our life skills products, as well as our Bring Your A-Game Anywhere, which is from our Aztec Workforce family uh, through the Center, of, uh, Center for Work Ethic Development. So let's jump right in. We're gonna start by talking about some of the print program features that really build persistence. And that's kind of the big kicker especially with the school year starting. Some of you have already started. Some of you are getting ready to start. I know that tomorrow is my first day with students. So right off of the bat, we're trying to figure out like, how do we get them to come back? How do we get them to stay? And so by using some of these different features, both with our print and our digital programs, hopefully that will help you inspire your students to continue coming to class and working. For our print materials, there are a lot of different features that you can use, but what I always go back to are these kind of foundational features, which is true for any of our products. And the way that I work with my students is really doing some kind of pre-assessments, figuring out what my students already know. And then based on that information, and that's individualized information, then trying to figure out exactly what that student needs to work on. So for our print materials, you could use certainly there's entry tests, there's unit reviews, uh, there's uh, subject area practice tests, those sorts of things that you could use. And not only, you know, do you get a score and the score says, hey, this is what you're supposed to be working on. But also it's going to say very specifically. So instead of saying like, oh, your math score is a little low, you need to keep working. It's going to give you explicitly what they need to work on. So you can see here, this is an entry test performance analysis chart for the reasoning through language arts practice test in our big book. Um, and for GED. And so you can see in here, it has very explicit page numbers as to exactly what that student needs to work on. So I don't know if you know my background, but I've taught in uh, adult education for, I believe this is my 20th year, 19th year. And in all of the programs that I have looked for as, a, as an instructor prior to coming and working full-time for Aztec, this is the only program that I have seen print-wise that tells you explicitly what your students need to work on based on page numbers and lessons, rather than like, oh, you're at a 60%, keep studying, keep trying harder, you're at an 80%, yep, you're ready to test. 
So in regards to print materials, this is the only program that I have seen that actually uh, peels out or allows the instructor or even the student, if they're working on their own, to identify exactly what content they need to work on. You'll also notice in our print materials, almost every single one of our print materials has an answer key. Those answer keys will give not only the correct answer, but it'll also give an explanation. So for my students who are using text, and this I believe is from our um, A Tutor for CASAS program, and I know our A Tutor for TABE has the same in their answer key, where it will explain to the student why that answer is correct. And so I always tell my students, the answer key is part of your work, because I want you to go through and read. You'll get more familiar with that vocabulary, but it also might explain a shortcut to answering a problem or some additional information perhaps you didn't know that would help you answer a similar problem in the future. So being able to take those print materials and make them accessible to all students can sometimes be tricky. I know that during the pandemic, I actually purchased materials, print materials for my students and then like doorbell ditched them at their houses when we were in lockdown because we didn't have access to the EPUBs. So EPUBs are electronic books like you would read on your Kindle or your Nook on your phone. They're available as organizational EPUBs so you could actually just put the EPUB on Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard. But then it's also available as an EPUB that you could purchase uh, the license for and it would be available on the actual Aztec learning system itself, so on our platform. Both of these, again, are additional fees that you would have to purchase the licensing for these materials, but your students then would be able to access them in their classrooms. And so you can see here that this classroom, this is the GED class, and here, right here, I know it's really small, but this says the learning plan, assignments, activity scores. And then over here is the bookshelf. And so you can see in this classroom, this GED class, this instructor's site has paid for the licensing for these EPUBs. And so these print materials are now available for that student on their bookshelf. When they open up that material, they can use the table of contents to easily navigate to the different pages. So they just have to click on unit one, lesson two, and boom, that's where they are. They can also answer their questions on the pages because these pages are dynamic. So they don't have to take notes on a separate sheet of paper, or put their answers on a separate sheet of paper. They can actually put their notes in the page and then go back and review them again as they're completing other work. We also have a bookmark tool in our EPUBs. I've seen teachers use this to mark the pages they want their students to either review at home or the pages that they have reviewed in class that they can then go back and refer to when they do the online class, the digital class uh, at home as well. So it's an easy way for them to navigate to work that they have just done or that they need to go and complete. There's also a section where they can take their own notes and they can keep their notes here on the pages as well. Again, if you are teaching from uh, the EPUB in class, your students may want to take notes in the note page as to what you're doing in class so that they can go back and refer to them at home when they're working either on the print pages in the EPUB or on the digital platform. So it makes everything really easily accessible to your students, whether they're working remotely, whether they're working in your class, or it's a hybrid blend of the two. So we're going to transition over to the digital programs. I just want to reach out to Chris real quick. Do we have any questions that perhaps I could answer? No, you're good to go. Okay, let's keep going. So we're going to look at some of the different features on our digital programs that will increase student persistence. So one of the first ones is the lecture tool. And what this allows is for the instructor to be available to the student or students anytime, anywhere through the Aztec platform.
And so the lecture tool allows the instructors to either provide instruction live or recorded in our lecture library. So the library, the lecture tool includes a way for you to record and also keep videos. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a video for my students. That's my plans later on this afternoon, and I'm going to attach it into my site so that my students then can go watch my intro video because my students come into class as open enrollment. And so instead of going through the same like, hey, hi, now you're going to click here. This is how you navigate through Aztec. This is how you go and do your GED practice test. I'm going to have the students actually watch the video and then um, we'll have them carry out those tasks, but it makes it so it's easy for them to find and refer back to if they do have any questions about setting up their GED.com accounts or setting up, we use Remind, the Remind account, things like that. But we have seen folks use our lecture tool for a variety of different things. We have seen folks use the lecture tool to run professional development because then they can record it. Folks that are working off site or working different hours can go back and review those videos because they're all in that library. But you can also in, uh, do instruction live as well. So I can carry out that instruction live with all of my staff that's available to come and then those folks that aren't able, able to attend they can watch those videos on their own we've seen a lot of instructors use it for students who are unable to come to class who perhaps had to miss for a day or a week or who just don't have means of transportation and need to work from home but we've also seen it where folks have made those videos they've relied on like the teacher sage in their department. So you have one person who is super good at explaining the five paragraph essay for GEDs. So that person will make a video that then is accessible to all students, even the students that aren't enrolled in that instructor's class. So a lot of different ways to be able to use this add on tool to really make your instruction more dynamic. Again, it can be live. They can be on demand in, as, as uh, videos that are saved in the library, but there are other tools within the lecture tool that allow for you to be able to actively engage with the learners in real time. So in this little piece here, you can see this little clipboard with check marks. There are different um, tools, you can do tally marks, you can do uh, multiple choice. So you can actually have your students working with you and they can respond if you put out a question to the group so you can check for understanding and it'll give you that data in real time. Okay, so 75% of the students got the correct answer. You, these students are still struggling. And then what's really great about this is all of that time is then captured in our reporting. So your students who are not able to come into class, either in real time as you're giving the video or after hours when they're reviewing those videos, all of that time on task and time logged in is recorded for you to be able to add to your attendance. So any questions about that before I move on, Chris? No, there have been a couple of questions about price structure, and I just want to remind everyone to um, go through to your reach out to your field service representative or your salesperson or contact us. Um, you might want to give them the address, Karen. Yeah, go to uh, support at AztecSoftware.com for pricing or sales at AztecSoftware.com as well. Thank you. So um, thank you. Another tool that we have is the announcements tool. And so the amount announcements tool, if you go into the admin center and click on administration, then click on announcements, you'll be able to set up an announcement for your students. So the announcements, you can set up an expiration date. You can add a reminder, which means it'll like go out as a new announcement again, 15 minutes before it's set to expire. If you set an expiration date. Um, 
you want to determine what kind of announcement are you doing? Is it for the, everybody who's enrolled in Aztec or just for your for the individual classes? You need to keep in mind that those classes, those are the Aztec classes. So however your classes are set up in Aztec, I know some sites have their classes spliced out by their field service rep. So this would be like GED math and then GED language arts and then GED science. So they're separated. In my case, on my site, it's just the GED class as a whole. But what I need to keep in mind is that this message is going to go to everybody enrolled in that GED class. So the night teachers, the day teachers, the off campus teachers, just kind of keeping that in mind. But then you can also send out notices to just your staff as well. So you could send it out to the instructors or the administrators, however you want to have that work. You want to make sure that you give your uh, your message a subject title or a subject name, and then you can type your message in below. Sorry, let me go back to this. So you can see here all of the different tools that we have. You even have a way to put in like film clips or pictures, links, hyperlinks. You can see here, I put a hyperlink in the beginning of my message. And so you can see on the student side, this is the message that I sent out. So you can see I've got a picture in there. I've got the hyperlink, all of that information. So it's a really text rich or heavy, you know, data rich information. And it's just a reminder to my students you know, hey, we've got, you know, there's no classes on this day. Make sure you don't come to class on this day. Um, but I think it's a really great thing to do with students. I know I've seen some sites where they put up as notices once a week, they'll put a statement of all of the students from the prior week who have passed the GED test, passed all four of their GED tests, the same with HiSET, or have moved up a level from like, let's say a fundamentals to a foundations. So they'll list all of the names of the students, only their first name and um, their first initial of their last name for confidentiality. But it's a great way to kind of inspire students like, hey, and then to celebrate those students that have done exceptionally well. Again, with our digital program, same as before, we really want to have them show what they know. And so for a lot of our programs, not our CTE programs, let me just preface that, but a lot of our other programs, there will be a pretest that kind of explains like, hey, show me what you know. Do you know all of these things? And also the drill. I have seen some folks use the drill to kind of say like, hey, are we sure we know this? Can we move forward? Do we need to move on? With any of those exams, and I'm using the pre, well, the pre or post test this is actually a post test as an example. And again, this is to get and navigate to the student scores. You would go to whatever class you're looking at, then click on student scores, then click on whichever test you're looking for. But I like to go to the pre tests and also the post tests um for my students because my students have to have an 80 percent or higher in order to move forward so if their post test is a little bit on the low side what i can do is i can click oh here we go student scores post test i can click on that little data chip it's going to open up a new window and that window if i click on the scoring analysis tab it's going to tell me what my student needs to work on so i'm assuming with this student who's taken a post test that they've done all of the work in that unit of study, but they're not quite in an 80%. So what this helps me do is identify what that student needs to work on and what that student doesn't need to work on. So I know the student understands point of view and author's purpose, but I know that student needs to work on supporting ideas and main idea and theme development. And what really helps a student is to be able to identify and share with them, here's something you know, and here's some things we need to go back and review because I'm not making them review stuff they already know, and we're only going to focus on the things that are going to bump their score up and the things that they actually need to work on. That builds persistence, I think, far more than any other strategy, showing them what they know and showing them they need to work on the things that they don't know. 
Another thing, another way to get that information is to look at some of the different reports. So many of us use the attendance report or the time on task report to be able to get those hours of attendance. But I get all of my information from the student activity detail report. And I know I went over this last week, but you know, this is the exam time for pre and post tests. So I can look and see, you know, what was their score? What was their score on multiple attempts? How much time did they take? When did they take it? Was it at two o'clock in the morning? That was too early. They should go back and review it. I can also look at the time they spend on the lessons. And so that really helps me if I see a student who's taken a drill 12 times and the score is terrible. If they haven't spent a whole lot of time on the lesson, then I can give them some guidance and say, hey, I need you to go back and do that again. You can also look at those drill or flash set scores, every single one here. And so this is just a really good way to go in and share with the student like, hey, I noticed that you did 12 drills yesterday. We need to stop and I'm gonna have you go work on your lessons. So one of the ways to get them to stop is to look into the learning views. And we talked a little bit about this. Actually, we talked a lot about this last week, but before we go forward, Chris, I'm gonna ask again, do we have any questions? No, I've answered the ones uh, that have come in, so you're good to go. Awesome, great. Okay, so we'll look at the learning views. And like I mentioned before, some of our students, they love to do, at least in my class, they love to do the drills because they know how to get an 80% or more to go forward, but they might not go back and review the lessons. So what I can do here is I can actually limit what they can see. So if I see that they're not listening, and they're just continuing to do the drill without getting to the lesson, I can actually remove the drill from their site so they can't see it. All of your students are set on a default setting. Usually that includes all of the information, all of the areas, all of those in the units. But what you can do is you can go limit it. So you can see here the student only has access to reading, they only have access to this for me and only have access to the unit of study, only access to these activities. So if I'm a student who's continuing to do the drill without working on the left, I can actually limit access to this and that is the only, only access to this lesson. That is the only thing they can work on. This means they need to be successful or I mean, you know, persistent to be successful, or it doesn't mean that successful. In some capacity, they need to feel like this is worth their while in order for them to be persistent. And so with some of my students, they just want to get done, and I'm sure some of yours too. They want to get done, they want to get done as fast as they can, but they're not using the program efficiently. And so sometimes it takes a wee bit of a heavy hand to get them to use the program efficiently. That learning view really helps because I can pull down everything I don't want them to work on and I'm saying, look, I want you to go do the lesson again. You're going to take tons of notes. I'm going to check and see how long it took you to take through, get through it. You and I are going to jump on a Zoom. We're going to look at your notes. Once I feel like, okay, you have gone through the material sufficiently, then we'll open that drill up again. So it really does help our students. They, if they get frustrated, then that persistence tends to kind of wane and go away. And even if they're doing, for lack of a better term, if they're doing it wrong, then it's still your job to get in there and help them uh, correct their study habits. And so the learning views is certainly a way to do that. So again, to get to settings for those learning views, because a lot of you should be in the new teacher platform. So learning views is actually shifted away. So you can see I'm in my GED class, but the learning view tab is no longer here. I'm gonna have to click on set. And then when I'm in settings, I click on learning views and then I can go in and adjust the learning view for that student. I can go for that student. So the next piece is, and again, we talked about assignments last week, but assignments means students have access to everything, whatever you have allowed for their learning view, but they've also assigned additional material to them. So what I appreciate about assignments is if you teach your students to always go to the assignments tab, then they can look and see if there's anything assigned to them. 
basically we need to go back and give you sign to that. And that would be new. It makes it really easy for the students to navigate. And so it really easy to do not only the assignments tab, also the assignments themselves, because they just have to click on those hyperlinks and those hyperlinks take them specifically to that information or that activity. So you can see here we have learning and drill, but the same name because this is the lesson and then this is the drill here. So that would allow that student to come back and review that material. You can also put a little note in there. I always do when I find things. Hey, I want you to review this for um, prep for CASA's benchmark test. Or, hey, I, I think we need to go back and review this again. Let me know when you're done, that sort of thing. And the other thing I love about this tool is that you can set a due date. And if the student has submitted it within that due date, they get blocked from everything else. So if you're adamant, like, I want you to go do this before you do anything else, you can say, and then they have no other choice in regards to me, I want to just go and complete those assignments in order to unlock the rest of the assignments. So with that, do we have any additional questions, Chris? No, we don't have any. You have been cutting in and out for the last little bit. So I just want to say uh, sorry, guys, for those of you that were having a little bit of trouble. Um, it it was on our end. So um, I, I had one thing that came in that I would like for you to address. And let me see if I can get back to it now. Um, hang on just a second, Karen. Sure. I wanted to know about the page where you had the description of what each tab um, is again. If you could just show that, they wanted to see the, the tab page. Maybe the reports. It might have been the reports. Oops, there was maybe this one that had all of the report features and descriptions. Description of what each tab was. I believe that that probably is it. Okay. Thank so, you. yeah, these are, you're welcome. These are the different reports that you can pull up on the Aztec system. Uh, time on task is what I use for attendance because I don't want my students just logging in and waiting in the wait room. Um, that is student attendance. So that's your login and log out time. I tell my students that you only get time for what you're actually working on. So I look at the time on task report. Student activity detail is the one we, we reviewed that gives you all the information on scores and time spent on each activity. Um, the activity overview gives just a, a, you know, a complete transcript of what the students have done, um, but it looks at, you know, completed activities and waived activities. So it's similar to the activity detail, but gives just a different type of information. So completed exams um, and waived activities that's not included in the student activity detail report in orange. Um, and then you also have class versions. So the bottom two class activity summary um, that gives you, and that's for the, the our class titles. So like the GED class. So that would be all students unless you pull out by tag um, the students from the other classes. But it'll tell you things like class scores, um, total time in different activities, that sort of thing. And then the classroom login just gives you kind of a snapshot of different things, different data, and you can see that here. Um, one of the things that the, that does is how we end, you know, maybe struggle trying to get it. Excuse me. And then, you know, if you have a student who says, well, I tried to get in and it wouldn't let me and you can go in and look and say, like, I don't have any, any, any record of you trying to log in at all. And I always love coming back to the students with the data like, hey, I noticed you did work for 20 minutes, but you, in 20 minutes, you took the drill 10 times and that's 20 minutes for 100 questions. That's a lot, especially when your score isn't very good. Let's let's find a different way to work. So again, all of that building good academic skills, study skills, and also building persistence. So I think with that, what we'll do is we'll end.